Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician Civil War. Karma Grandpa Gaming, this is episode 24 of our Rebel Summer 61 campaign using the AOM mod. So, uh, last episode we left off, we did have two engagements at Cairo, uh, fighting off uh, two of their corps, respectively. There's three corps in that army. You've never seen the army commander come on the field, and the army never approached us in its entirety, which is kind of odd, but because if they came at, the, came at us with their entire army, we probably wouldn't be able to hold on to Cairo with the 15,000 men we have there, but they chose not to do that. But look at the map here. We are... Whoa. Where'd that blue blob come from? When did the Federals move into Petersburg? Hello. Army of Shenandoah. I need to start swinging down this way, please. That's unforeseen. <laughs> okay. They took Petersburg from me and I never noticed. When did that happen? Okay. But, uh, outside of that little hiccup there, the Western campaign is going to pace, uh, Army of West Tennessee is sitting where it's staying for right now. Army of the Mississippi is on its way to Chicago. The Indian Army is at Milwaukee and flipping that over to our control. So we will actually hold the Mississippi up to the Illinois River and then we'll hold the Illinois up to uh, Lake Michigan. I would like to say we hold the Mississippi in its entirety up to Lake Superior, but that's not going to happen until I can get the siege train up here to take down the fort at St. Paul. But first, we have to take down this fort at Kearney so I can get control of the Oregon Trail node. So, uh, things are going to pace, except for this little hiccup here. And also, the uh, traveling iron, which I did have on its way to Chicago, I did halt because I started moving them to Chicago because, like, I, I, I started uh, tunnel visioning in on Chicago and getting this section secured for a winter holdover. And I totally forgot the Army of Southwest Missouri, so uh, we're going to be handling them sometime. Hopefully this episode, I wanted to do it last episode, but i got to get the uh, readiness back up on this army before I can go take down the three, possibly four corps in this area. So there might be a fourth corps here now. But they, they're in a supply wasteland. I don't think they have built any depots, but I could be wrong. So uh, I need to be prepared for this fight because it could be it could either be like a, a walkthrough or a massive throwdown. So you can go either direction on that fight. Everything else is looking quiet. Uh, we still have not flipped Missouri over to our control, which is kind of sad. But support here was at forty percent. It's now down to thirty-four percent, and partially because this little control here, even though they don't hold any towns, I think it's partially because of this bubble here from the Army Southwest Missouri. And not holding control of Warsaw. The town of Warsaw kind of sits in its own little bubble. It's outside the control nodes of St. Joseph, St. Louis, and uh, Fort Smith. So nothing really controls this town. So the Engineer Corps, which is now at Murfreesboro, just south of Nashville, is going to make its way. Because I'm going to rebuild this trunk line here. Because some of our telegraph communications run through Federal Control Zone. I'm going to reroute it down through Charlotte, Jackson, back up towards Cairo. He's going to swing out this way and build a fortification at Warsaw to take control of that node. Just to make sure that we get our uh, support a little bit higher. Alright, I think that covers everything for the recap. It is now August 1st, so it is time for the monthlies. So, economics. Current rating of our nation is B+. Plus. We're actually showing a BB-, minus, which is uh, mediocre. Our debt remained unchanged compared to last month. We did not cut another bondage, I'm amazed about. But we're probably about to cut one. Our current economy cycle is recovery. Wealth population is mediocre, increasing compared to the previous month. Our tax revenue has increased by $72 million. So, I think that might actually be accurate for once. Uh, last month, we it says we constructed one hospital. The hospital is under construction. It's not complete yet. 
Uh, total export volume was 524 out with 535 coming in. So, making a little more money on uh, what's coming in now. Average court production over the last three months was on 63 million, a change of plus 15, and we still lack flour, iron, artillery ammunition, but we're full of fish, salt, and wood, which is about accurate, which is about where we always sit with that. Looking at finances, we're still spending a lot more than we are bringing in, though, uh, still kind of staying steady on our expenses, not going overly heavily on them. Uh, Army up keeps at 227, Navy's at 27 mil because I don't have much in the water. Recruitment's cost me 70 million, supply depots are at 30 million now because I did have to build a bunch of depots. Though there is a project coming up that should help reduce those costs. So right now, we're spending 647 million a month. So we're all over 100 million over our income. So, total revenues are 68 million. We are spending money faster than we can make. But that's always that's always the way it is about war. So, uh, commenter asked me to go over my economics plan for the campaign. Uh, anybody who follows me knows I did not go heavily into economics in this campaign as I have done previously, as I had focused entirely at the start on bringing the British and French into the war, which we brought the British into the war, but they are still just sitting up here. Didn't cover that in the recap. They're still sitting up here at the border, not doing anything. They have not intervened at all. They're just sitting there. They're, you know, King says, yeah, we're intervening, but we're just going to sit at the border, wave flags, and cheer you on. That's They're basically a cheer squad right now, wasting away up on the border, not doing nothing. So uh, I think that was a wasted effort at this point. French has still not intervened, though they should at some point. I don't know what else I got to do to bring them in. But, uh, yeah, so economics-wise, I did not focus on it this time. Like I said, normally I go down the line with funding, because what you want to do, the best way to get the economy of your nation going is get to banks. Even though we actually haven't unlocked that chapter yet, or... We're about to unlock the chapter. Once you're able to build banks, banks free up a lot of capital, and they create a lot of capital. They create a lot of wealth. So once you have banks built, uh, we start with one at New Orleans, but if you get one built at, like, Mobile, you go to all your big cities and build a bank, your economy flourishes. Absolutely flourishes. Uh, you can't go around and build farms. or like You can build markets, which I... I'm not sold on their efficacy, to be honest with you, because they're always in high demand, and if you let the game auto-place those, they'll, like, cluster 10 of them in the same spot, and not really have any effect on the area, so I'm not really sold on the efficacy, I think I'm going to explore more with the markets on the next campaign, that's an 1861 start, so I think that's something you got to start using from the start in order to have any real effect from it. Uh, what would really help us right now is capturing an iron mine. The closest one is up here in Maryland, and I just don't want to have a Rochambeau back and forth battle up here at uh, Frederick or uh, Cumberland, because that's where the iron mine is up here outside of Frederick. So I just don't want to be sitting on the Union side and just taking a beating trying to hold on to an iron mine. Uh, there are other mines. What you can do is increase their size. There should be one down here. Where is it? It's outside of Knoxville somewhere. Yeah, we do have one here. You can increase the size of it. You want to do it with subsidy funding, but you got to let your subsidies build up. Otherwise, it's very expensive. So you need 4.1 million in subsidy funding. If you do it without that, it's about double that. So yeah, if you do it without the funding, it's 19 million. It's 4.1 in subsidies if you can bank up the subsidies if you have your industry maxed out. Like, I'm not working on industry right now, so we're not able to get funding. So you need to unlock this line here to increase your subsidy funding sliders, but it's just not something I'm working on, so it's not something I'm worried about. So let me turn off the front lines here. 
market influence. Like you see, there are some markets built, but they're not something I'm really worried about. The other thing is, you can upgrade your plantations, you can upgrade your farms. Uh, I don't see the point in doing it, to be honest with you. So once you, another good way of getting your uh, money going, especially as a confederacy, is clearing out the gulf. If you can get the ironclads together or a big enough fleet of frigates early game before the ironclads start becoming a nuisance, you can clear out the Gulf of Mexico. I've done it in a previous campaign. Once the gulf is clear, you're making money hand over fist. Your economy is booming. doesn't really help you personnel-wise, but your economy is in a very, very good place. So you don't have to worry about expenditures. Or you can do one of the things I'm doing right now, and that is work on your railroads. So I do have two under construction right now. The Alabama Jackson Selma is 93% complete, which is this rail line from here to here and here. And I'm working on Texas, Houston, and Shreveport, which is 12% complete. So this is moving at about 10% a month, which is actually not too bad. It's moving pretty quickly. So I'm building the Gulfport rail lines. You really want to do this to help your army logistics, but it takes so long that using them to help your army is not that doesn't really do you much. What you really want to do is get your Gulf Coast lines built, like the uh, Georgia, Savannah, and Tallahassee, the Louisiana, Houston, and Brashear, and the Louisiana, New Orleans, and Tallahassee, because these all three connect along the Gulf Coast. They all know together. So you get those three built, and your Gulf, and the Gulf Coast economy is just out of control if you can get them built. They are expensive to build, but the uh, the dividends pay. The dividends pay. Everything else is not really worth touching. So, like I said, I didn't have much in the way of plans for economics on this campaign. I will delve into it more at a later campaign. All right, coming over to intelligence. According to our intelligence sources, the analysis the federal government is currently discussing, they're still working on emancipation proclamations. So I think this might be glitched. They've been working on this for months now. It should be finished. This should be finished, but it's not. Uh, they completed military railroad, self service units move a little faster. They haven't recruited any men into any brigades, and two new ships have started construction. This, so, some of this is not making sense. I think it's a bad intel report. Come over here to strategy. So, national morale, they're at 64 to our 95. National floor, they're at 78 to our 74. That's because we control a lot of. Union territory that not flipped into our control. Uh, men fielded at 306,434 and a field of 201,239. So this tells you right here that report's not accurate at all. Uh, battles won, they're at 16 to our 69. Total casualties, that are 150,888 to our 51,973. So uh, you're doing very, very well on the casualty count. Uh, European relations are at 0 to our 100. Trade Warfare, which I'm not playing with at all. They're at 226 million to our 1 billion. I'm not really sure where these costs come from. So, uh, I'm really not sure how this is all worked out. It's something I've got to look into. All right, policies. I really wish we had the draft done right now, but we're still working on funding one, which is going to take another 79 days. So this was over 100 days to complete because of the low state support, because of all the territory I control out here. As soon as that is done, we're going to run over to print notes, which I really don't like using, but I think we do need. And that's going to take a little less than 30 days. And after that, we're going to run over to conscription, which is going to take 143 days, but we do need to get it done. It's like, I, this is something I need to work on immediately. So hopefully I can get that done prior to the winter finishing. Because we do need additional soldiers. We don't have anything left. I have started recruiting three more brigades. They are forming up in the engineer corps since I once again I did not build a recruit depot. Um got two more brigades coming in. Got the second legion of Florida men because I had enough men to give me another legion. And we have the first South Carolina Legion also forming up. So this is on command of Haygood, this is on command of Perry. And these horse batteries are taking a long time. So Ramser's already recruited finally. 
and Ori we're still waiting on. These things have been taking forever, but the Engineer Corps is moving around further and further west, so it takes longer for the troops to get there. All right, I think that covers, oh wait, projects. What do we have? Okay, I'm gonna hold off on, I need this funding for railroad construction. So I'm gonna hold off on taking any of this, even though I do kind of need to do that. Uh, trade deals are gonna hold off on. I can get Austrian rifles now, though they are not really worth it. I need, yeah, I need that funding for railroad. I need another level of railroad construction to speed it up a little bit more. So we gotta hold off on using this funding. I don't need to send envoys anymore. I could take Austrian rifles. They really don't do us any good, but what I want to save up for is get start getting some British artillery pieces. Like the Blakeleys are very, very good at taking down infantry. So I want to save up for that. Where is it? And that's going to take a lot of money, so that's something I want to save up for as a British artillery, so we're saving up for that. I could start making Confederate rifles, though. I didn't, once again, I did not go into industry this campaign around, so we're not going to be doing that. What I really want is not logistics reform. It's supply reform. Nope, it is logistics reform. And that's not available to us just yet. It's almost available, because this will reduce our logistics costs, so... That's going to help us a lot by reducing the cost of our depots and the cost of supplies. I do want to take a level of military education or training reform, but I need to get the logistics costs down a little bit. Our logistics costs are not as high as they would be with the Federals, but it is worth bringing it down. So, no projects for this month. They'll definitely be next month. So, I think that does cover everything at this point. So, uh, I'll be back with the next incident. Well, 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 we have found who snuck into Petersburg, and it is the Army of New England. Which I did see them form up a long time ago, and then never saw them again. They actually had a less than a division strength on infantry. They got one division of infantry, 8,967 men, but they do have 81 guns. A nice little gift for us. I... You know what? They... They have so few men, it probably took them so long to flip Petersburg that I didn't even notice they were down there. So, uh, they're on the command of Schofield. Okay. So, we're bringing 14,037 infantry, 1,300 cavalry, and 29 guns. We definitely outnumber these guys. We're just going to push out, find them, and friggin' crush them. Because, uh, they pissed me off a little. Welcome, my grunts, to the Battle of Petersburg. We are on the Cold Harbor Gaines Mill map. And actually, the two defense points that the Federals have are Gaines Mill and New Cold Harbor. Which is uh, really interesting. Have you ever been to these battlefields? They're not... Honestly, looking at, if you've ever been to Gainesville, I don't understand how the Confederates were able to push through the attacks the way they did in Cold Harbor. is just the opposite for the Federals. It's just a bad place to fight in general. Out on the peninsula is just a bad place. A lot of cricks like this, a lot of swamp. It's not conducted to fighting. But uh, since that's, those are those defense points, I'm going to come right down. We're on the other side of the map, so it's going to take me most of the day to get there. It's 7 a.m. I'm going to bring my forces down to around this farm field here, mass up, and then just push right into them because they don't have a lot of forces defending. So, uh, I'll be back once I'm in position. Alright, it's now 9.30 in the morning and my cavalry has arrived at my mass up point. We do have the federal side. They are spread out. Kind of a odd formation. But they've seen my cavalry, so it looks like their formation is shifting. So right now, I have everybody just basically coming down the mass up this way. And I'm now contemplating replacing Garnett as he should be up here where Barto is. And he is marching his men very poorly. So he should be all the way up here. But he's all the way back here and it's delaying my entire line of march. Usually it's something I blame on the artillery. This time around it's on a brigade commander. So it's slightly annoying. Now he's going to start cutting cross country. Are you kidding me? So... 
So he is delaying everybody. But I'm thinking about stealing an early attack against this uh, Federal Artillery here with my cavalry by sending them in through the woods here and skirmishing along this area. Let's get that cold steel perk turned off. Okay, when it starts with that turned on. So I might be able to make a quick grab on some of this artillery. They're already getting ready to break. They're already flashing bad on their morale. The morale's at 31 to our 52. It was a little lower. It just took me a few hours to get here, so the morale did improve just a little bit. But I might just be able to break them with the two regiments of cavalry. Before the rest of my forces even arrive. I just want these guys gone. Barto is not too far away. I could await his arrival. Because he's in much his brigade's in much better condition than Garnett's. Now B's disrupted because of Garnett. Newtown artillery is disrupted now. Everybody behind Garnett's been disrupted because of Dark Garnett. I'm seriously contemplating replacing him now. Usually a good commander, but not today. He's breaking up the division's line of march. Yeah, that could be a good thing. It gets him out of the way. But, uh, Jackson, your division is disappointing right now. So, yeah, we're going to start pushing in the cavalry. I'm going to dismount and put them in loose order. And push against these two batteries over here. Get us some uh, quick victories. So, maybe we can get this done before the infantry even arrives. Let's just push straight in. Why are you guys getting mounted up? You've got to be kidding me. So one thing I did do was hit go out once again with the Muncies. I did go out and hand out a lot more weapons. We still did not have a lot of good weapons to hand out. Did not capture as many Springfield rifles as I thought I had. Most of this force now does have Springfield rifles. Or they should all have Springfields, I think. So I did have some Derringers left in this force. I think they're all gone now. So that's a good thing. And you guys got mounted too. What the absolute. Brigade or skirmishes? Looks like a brigade disrupted. Brigade. You have three brigades of infantry like I thought and just a lot of artillery. We should be able to do this with the cavalry. Especially if they break quick. What are you boys doing? Don't glitch out on me. Thank you. Everybody seems to be a little disappointed today. Get some orders coming in for the Federals to just sort of dispatch Ryder. Wow, we're already at 34 losses. Hmm. Order. We 
really should not be taking heavy casualties like this. Push on next battery. Big batteries. These are full-size battalions, ten guns each. Be a nice gift of artillery for my forces. Told you guys to push forward. Push forward, damn it! Don't leave the seventh or the first hanging. Let's go. What the hell is he doing? I'm about to replace your ass. Let's go. That got him. Everybody's wondering what today's battle brew is. It's 569. Where the hell is my damn zip? I misplaced it again. Ways off, so his order's gonna take a while. That's two batteries seen off. Casualties are even on. Gonna wait for one of the infantry brigades to come in before I push in any closer. They may come to us though, which would be a good thing. I don't think they'll come to us. Four brigades of infantry. 2,400. 2,300. Oh, my, my intel was way off on these guys. Maybe not. No, it's not. It's not. I think it's a little off, but not too badly. Yeah, they have a they have a thousand more infantry than my initial intelligence told me they did. You guys going to attack us? Not their range to fire at us. Lay down, boys. Maybe we can force them to come to us. Those orders. Jackson's all the way back here. I think once we get Bartow into action, this will be a foregone conclusion. Where's that dispatch rider? 
I think I just heard him. I don't see him. Is that dispatcher? There he is. I think Bartow right in here on their flank. Get them to turn, push into cavalry. That should be it. Let Bartow take the glory for this one, along with the cavalry. Because Garnett's a fool. Looks like he's finally cat. No, there's B, so he must have bypassed Garnett. Where the hell's Garnett? He's all the way back here. So B totally bypassed Garnett. Good man. Good man. I like your initiative. They're not going to push into my cavalry. are actually not even sending anybody out to grab the guns, which is kind of weird. The AI always seems to do that. They're not doing it this time. But I'm happy about that also, because these skirmish units, when they grab guns, always seem to be harder to take down. Bees nearby. Let's get them stacked up behind you. Two guns left in the new town artillery. I should probably send this brigade battery home, see if they can't get anybody, but there's nobody left in Virginia. I want to double time them into position, but I'm gonna wait till they're out of the cornfield. yet? Looks like he did. Good. Right in on that infantry. It's going to be a little hard to command these units because Jackson's not here, but I think it's worthwhile. We are still strung out. Tiller's all the way back here by Shady Grove Church. And that's forcing them to push on the cavalry. Good. Open up your flanks to us. They stop the face of the infantry. Uh, they are not. Thought they would stop and face the infantry. Push them a little closer, boys. Can't wait till I get enough Jocelyn's to issue those out. Is that for eight? Yeah, 
Garnet finally get his act together. I push on that battery. Cavalry support. See them off, please. I want to get rid of these brigades so I get my cavalry and these batteries back here. Seen off. Why are you boys not? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna end up replacing McDonald. He's starting to piss me off. It should be moving already. guys are down that low ground. That's false cover for them. Scofield could have not picked a worse spot to defend at. We still not see these guys. They're laying down right there. We're on top of them. B push up. This 
brigade ran off when it wasn't looking. It should be right here. Nope, they're still there. How the hell do we not see these guys? They're right on top of them. Basically fighting the battle of Gaines Mill, but in reverse, actually. Uh, actually, no, we are not, so... Yeah, Federals are fending here, Rebels attacking down through here. We're actually literally fighting the battle of Gaines Mill almost dead on. So the Federals didn't stack up to defend like they would have at the battle. They were stacked up. Brigades lined here, brigades above them, everybody firing in this direction. It's a pretty awful position to attack. I don't know if the rebels pulled it off. Up. No, I don't think we're going to need them. The infantry's broken. All that's left is the artillery. So, uh, start advancing against them. Just move them out of the way. You guys are done for this fight. Take a lot more casualties than I expected. They are retreating. They just haven't given the withdrawal order yet. The hell are you doing, B? Get these guns before they get away. And 
And there's a withdrawal order. We got 11 minutes to run up the casualties. Government's wet dream right here, back in the guns with no infantry support to be seen. These guns aren't even firing at them, they're just there. That last battery. Oh, there's one more that's going to get away, but that's all right. Smallest one. I don't even think I saw Schofield on the map. Where the hell is he? That's all she wrote. Not a very exciting battle at all. I took a lot more casualties in my cavalry than I did expect. The artillery had, I think, an oversized effect on the unit that was in loose order. So we took down 750 of their 10,000 infantry. We got 90 of their 95 guns because that one battery got away. So they had 95 guns on the field to the 81 my intelligence told me they had. Almost so a 1,300 of their 11,000 men. Kind of a, a skirmish in the grand scheme of battles. We lost 102 of our 14,034 infantry, 270 of our 1,300 cavalry, zero of our guns. Total loss of 378 of our 15,700. Right, we did lose the one battery commander wounded. And that was uh, Captain Beck in Newtown Artillery. No gear here, so I'm just going to see what of their officers we wounded or killed. So uh, Lytle's wounded, their division commander, and everybody's in that one division. Of course they are. Wounded Brigadier Gerald Boyle. Lieutenant Colonel Brown. All right, wounded three of their officers. Not too bad. We we'll get closed out here, and I'll see you on the newspaper screen. Victory at the Battle of Petersburg. Looks like they blamed this battle on a poor old Lieutenant Colonel over here, McCalvin. So the enemy army of New England is running in panic. The enemy supported the suffered total casualties of 1,290 men. There are 165 killed and 349 captured. Our casualties total 378 men with 99 killed, 39 missing, and the rest are wounded. Captured 321 rifles and 34 guns from the field and sent 315 soldiers off to our prison camps. Let's get that one rolled off. The problem with this fight is I did have to unmask Winchester, but it doesn't look like the Federals are moving against it, which is kind of surprising. The thing is, where are these boys going to retreat to now? Just place that battery commander. And they've already been replaced. Who's that? Whitfield, where are you from? You're from Texas. No, it's a Virginia battery. Gets a Virginian. Let's go by 
seniority. All right, Lieutenant Colonel Stark, you're up. I don't know where they're going to retreat to, but you got to get gone. All right, we're starting to flip Petersburg back into our control. Hopefully, the Federals fill. They did not fill up the depot. I think they just built that. Let's get these boys down to Petersburg proper, and then get them back up to Winchester. Right, every other front looks a little quiet for now, so um, I'll be back. All right, it's now January, January 8th, August 8th. <laughs> And uh, we did move against the forces that moved into Richmond behind us as we were dealing with the Army of New England, who have retreated over to Williamsburg. So we're going to have to turn on them next. Uh, Army of Shenandoah is going to be very busy here in the next few days. So we have 1st Corps Armed Potomac with 13,580 men and 19 guns, with uh, 9,741 infantry, 3,612 cavalry. Under command of Mansfield. We're bringing 14,095 infantry, 1,071 cavalry, and 29 guns. So, uh, yep, yeah, we left the back door open and they sneaked on through. And it looks like First and Third Corps are probably looking to push past us at Manassas again. It's First Corps of Army of the James, Third Corps of the Potomac. Things in Virginia are looking a little hot. Let's go uh, take care of this issue first. Welcome, my grunts, to the Battle of Richmond. So we are on the attack. The Federals are defending Shady Grove Church. And we are entering from down here by New Cold Harbor in the southeast. So they don't have a lot of forces. About half of ours. But it's going to take me a while to get there. And so they're showing, we're showing a minor victory right now. Their morale is at 42 to our 47. But their morale is going to raise as we approach. So my plan of attack is to uh, stay along a river here, come up through Mechanicsville, and attack along these two roads over here. One division up this way, one division sweeping in over here. Possibly sending my cavalry up through the farm track over here to the east of Shady Grove Church. So uh, might end up being a three-prong attack. I think we we're only going to need the two divisions for this, though. So uh, I'm going to get my troops in motion. I'll come back in once we have contact with the Federals. All right, it's now 1440, and we do have the federal side here, or at least their uh, cavalry branch there. This is their right flank here, and they just spread up this way. So, uh, once again, we are fighting first Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Vermont. Mixed cavalry brigade, some brigades of infantry or regiments out in the woods here. I do have some artillery firing down on my cavalry right now, so we're going to get them uh, out of their line of sight. So, uh, change of plan on attack is, uh, their flanks right here where we can smash into it. So I'm waiting for my infantry to get here. I have Jackson's division on the way, and since that cavalry is just sitting there, as soon as that division arrives, and everybody's still strung out down the road here, just kind of, just got the last elements on the move here. But I think as soon as Jackson arrives, we can start pushing this attack. So, it'll be a late day attack. But we should be able to pull it off fairly quickly. So, uh, yeah. Jackson right here on the flank and just drive into them. So they are out in the open and an easy target. I'll be back once the infantry arrives. Alright, it's now 1700, and Jackson's division is in place, so we are advancing forward on the Federal Cavalry. It looks like they're actually turning to meet us. French's division has arrived on his right. I'll start sending them in once Jackson's division has engaged. Still awaiting the arrival of Yule's division, and he's just kind of screwed up the whole order of march back here, so uh, his division and the artillery are delayed in arrival, and I'm not waiting for them. So, in we go.
your infantry stay in place. It's just a gap that's come out so far. Try to move your boys up. There's cover right now off my flank. Not too worried about that one. Let's go, boys. Still hasn't made it up here? Jeez. Alright. Individual orders to the brigades then. And we got a broken cavalry brigade right in front of us. That's not good. That's jinxed. You boys hold. We gotta send you around.
And so the woods are going to keep falling back in front of us. Just keep pushing them. It looks like infantry's coming out to play. Some of it is. Broken regiment right here is destroyed. We marched into them. We'll actually break whichever unit sent into them. So we got to go around that. It's just throwing everything off right now. back here. you got to be kidding me. He's, I think I got it.
Today is ours, boys. Just gotta push a little harder. These Yankees do not want to fight. Alacrity, I like to see it. Boy's got us outranged, really. What are you armed with? Turn between those running battles, isn't it? Interesting they came out to fight, but, uh, poorly executed. I did throw a wrench in my plans to that broken cavalry brigade over here. It made this a little bit harder than it should have been, but also afforded us the opportunity to uh, surround that blob of infantry out here. Really can't complain too much. percent of their force. us. You know, I forgot about my cavalry back here. Come take care of those boys. There's Virginia. Come join up this way. I need to get you guys closer. Then forget about the uh, Valley Cavalry. Yep, they are issuing withdrawal order. There it goes. 
Go get me those guns. I have to double quick, please. Not let Yankees escape with any artillery. Just shy of getting that major victory. It's like the 11th US is coming in to help the artillery get away. That's it, we are out of time. Somebody get that last battery. Alright, not too bad, except for uh Yule. I think it did this me at the last battle too, but I'm finding this over two days, so I really can't remember. I did the live stream in between the shoots, so memory's a little hazy. There's a lot going on. So we lost 863 of our uh, 14,091 infantry, two of our 1,070 cavalry, zero of our 29 guns, total loss of 865 or 15,531 men. Took down 1,100 of their 10,000 infantry, 1,200 of 3,700 cavalry, 15 of 20 guns, total loss of 2,400 of their 14,000 men. So we didn't lose any officers wounded, not that I saw. Nope. No viewer units in this force, so we're just going to take a look at their officers. Wounded Buford. Irish Legion was on the field, but I didn't see him. Must have been up in the uh, the backwoods there. Wounded Major Towers. Just watch the reserve. Give me the regulars. Wounded Major Smith. Except for batteries. Except for we got three of the officers. Not too shabby. We can close that here and see all the newspaper screen. Victory at the Battle of Richmond. First Corps Army of Potomac fleeing in panic. Captain Steiner became a hero. I don't understand how Captain Steiner became a hero because the artillery didn't do much in the fight. Looks like it blamed the loss on a poor old major. Battle of Richmond's ended. First Corps Army of Potomac retreating in panic. The army's probably suffered total casualties of 2,371 men. There are 317 killed and 454 captured. Our casualties total 865 men, 127 killed, 92 missing, and the rest are wounded. We captured 1,009 rifles and 6 guns from the field and sent 437 soldiers off to our prison camps. These two numbers do not add up. What is going on with those numbers? All right, normally I would roll this off at this point, but we do have these two corps approaching us. Or are they gonna move past us? Let's stay here. So they do have our two battles for this episode. Are they gonna try and bypass us? It's a possibility. I think that's how they got into Richmond. Nope, coming out at Manassas, it looks like. Now, oh, still got two rails. They could be going for Winchester. Nope, coming for Manassas. All right, looks like First Corps Army of James is on its way to Manassas. We're going to resecure Richmond here, then go kick the Army of New England off the peninsula. 
Uh, they still have not gone after Charleston, amazingly enough. Second course is still sitting there doing nothing. Engineer Corps is now at Charlotte. The siege train has begun the siege of Fort Kearney. And I do have the harem on its way to take on the Army of Southwest Missouri and hopefully kick them out of Missouri completely this time and get them out of the AO. Uh, Army of Western Tennessee is still residing in Springfield. And Army of Mississippi has taken Chicago and the Indian Army has taken Milwaukee. So, we are, we are in control of the West. We're in control of the Midwest and West outside of the Army of Southwest Missouri here and the fortification up here at St. Paul. We have complete control out here. Like I said, I'm probably going to build a fortification here at Warsaw just to color that in, possibly. Get our uh, state support up maybe a little more. I don't know if it'll work or not. How's this siege looking? I think they had a lot of troops in here. Yeah, they got... A battalion of the 2nd U.S. Infantry and the 10th U.S. Infantry Regiment in here. Plus a cavalry battalion and a battery. So it's probably going to take a little bit to get them out. We'll get it eventually. It is a level 2 siege force, so uh, maybe they'll hit level 3 while taking this on, which will make it easier to take the garrison at St. Paul. Alright, I do believe we'll end this episode here, so once again, if you're a new viewer, return of you, you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you do, remember that bell icon so the next video comes out. Follow along in the series and enjoying it. Don't forget to bayonet that like button, buster up that comment section, and I will see you all in the next episode. Stay grumpy.